Some reptiles are better to handle than all of the others. And today I want to talk about the top five most fun and most tolerant to handling reptiles. My name's Adam. This is Littlefoot. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. start off with number five and what's becoming a channel favorite, the Doomrolls Boa. <laughs> this is Cubone, the Doomrolls Boa. This is a female about a year old or so. And Doomrolls Boas are quite a bit smaller, or can be quite a bit smaller than red tails or common boas or whatever you want to say. These guys here are going to get to a maximum of about six and a half feet. Between four and six is pretty average for these guys. Females getting a little bit bigger. And they have this amazing pattern, so while you're holding them, they look absolutely beautiful. And the idea is, with any animal, I mean, you want to look at it, and if you want to handle it, which is what this list is all about, Dormos Boas doesn't really get much better than this. So unlike, say, a hognose snake, which make pretty much every list except for this one, surprise, surprise, uh, they hold on to you. So a hognose snake, it's not going to, it's going to, you know, kind of fall. It, it doesn't really do a great job of hanging on to you, so you have to be very careful. But that is definitely not the case with this Doomrolls Boa. She will definitely hold on to you. She's very calm and inquisitive, and in general, just very fun to handle and very fun to look at. And when she looks around, she looks around with intent, like she's very intelligent, like she wants to know what's going on. Where the, some people, their gripe with other animals and other species of snakes is that they are kind of just derpy, and they don't really know what's going on, and they're just kind of boring. And a Doomrolls Boa, is not that. And this is by no means a care guide, but I'll just touch on the care uh, of each of these animals because every animal on the list is going to have the same thing in common. They're great pets also, and they're easy to take care of. And with the Doomrolls Boa, similar uh, care to other boas. Um, there's a care guide up here over my left shoulder if you want to watch, but they're going to be a little bit drier. They don't need a bunch of height, that type of thing. And the humidity is going to be, well, I guess I just said that, a little bit drier, right? So not that hard to take care of. Uh, I got a full care guide for you. And if you watch the last video, I talk about the difference between these guys and uh, more common boas, like common boas and red tails. Number four, and one of my favorites, this is Irwin, the blue tongue skink. Now, these guys do take some time to socialize sometimes. If you get them as adults and they weren't handled, they're not going to be as easy to tame down as some of the other things that are going to be on the list. These guys will take a little bit of work, but once you get them, they're good. They'll run away from you, they might hiss at you a little bit, but once all that's done, they're really fun to handle, and they're inquisitive, and they seem to like you after a while, maybe because they think you're going to bring them food, but whatever. Irwin seems to be my buddy, which is fantastic. I like that. It wasn't like that at the beginning, but now that him and I have, I have had about a year to bond, and I think I got him about a year ago. Okay. I will. This is one of my favorite to interact with, and one of my favorites. Now, the reason that they're so low on the list is because uh, it does take a little bit of work, right, in comparison to some of the others, which you'll see in a second. And also, these guys are a little bit more boring, for some people to handle because they're slow and they're derpy and they do look around and they seem a little bit inquisitive and they're always having that blue tongue flick. Now would be a perfect time for you to... No? Okay. They flick that blue tongue a lot, which is really interesting because that's, you know, what they do, they're blue tongue skinks, but also it's just beautiful. And when people see them and, you know, if someone comes down to the reptile room, they always want to hold this guy because it's a big, impressive lizard. He's about, I don't know, 30 inches or so, maybe a little bit longer. It's a full size blue tongue skink, which if you want to know more about, care guide, surprise, surprise, there will be for most of these. This is, uh, you know, one of the more impressive lizards that you can own without being dangerous. I mean, if they bite you, it sucks, but he's never tried. They don't really try unless they think you're food or they're really, you know, a little bit skittish. But if you work with them and they're not really afraid of you, you don't have to worry about that. If they ever try to take a pop at you, maybe uh, it would bleed a little bit, but it's not going to be something like a monitor bite where you need stitches. And that's the thing with a lot of these that I'm going to classify as great handling reptiles is the risk factor for real danger and real injury is going to be non-existent or very low. And with Erwin, he is more concerned about getting away from me sometimes if he doesn't want to be handled and he might huff and puff but at the end of the day when he's walking around he'll just kind of look around and try to maybe bite my sandal to figure out what it is just kind of like tasting it almost uh, but he's never shown any aggressiveness or aggression I guess is the right word but yeah see how his head just turns like that he sees me on the other side of him he is inquisitive and you know 
but not super defensive. And I think that kind of goes for most blue tongue skinks. They're more concerned about what's going on around them, but they don't, they're not the type of guy that walks into a bar and is looking over his shoulder all the time. This is the type of guy that there could be a fight going on behind him and he's in the middle of a conversation and not know anything about it. They're not super flighty. Uh, they're, they're not, their biggest priority it seems isn't watching out for predators like some other animals, which makes them not great for handling because they try to take a pop at everything. They're just kind of big potatoes with arms, short little tiny arms. And that's my favorite part because the way that they feel in your hand with their scales that are very smooth and their body, which is girthy, but not heavy and they're not dangerous. I love blue tongue skinks and they're so much fun to handle. And if you do let one walk around on your floor, they're not gonna get away. This isn't uh, an anole or something like that where it's just gonna dart and then you'll never see it. This guy, it'll take a while for him to get away. And if he does, you know, you can chase him down pretty easily. Blue Tongue Skinks hold a special place in my heart and not only because they're beautiful, easy to care for, uh, they're just really fun to handle as well. Number three, and one that could probably easily be number one on most people's lists, is this not the biggest, chunkiest, female ball python that you have ever seen. I just wanted to give you an idea of how big these things can get because a lot of people say, oh, they're too small. They're not interesting to handle at all. They're boring and derpy. Look at this unit of a ball python. Now this is a gravid female. So we're gonna put her back just cause I don't wanna bug her. I just wanted to show you how big these things can actually get. And when you handle them, I don't know what she weighs right now full of eggs. This is the heaviest ball python I've ever put my hands on. She is all of five and a half feet. And when I weighed her before she even got gravid, she was close to 3000 grams, 3000 grams. That is a lot. So although most of them aren't this big, they are fun to handle the bigger that they get in my opinion. And you've seen Pikachu and a bunch of my other videos and a bunch of my other ball pythons. I handle them a lot for videos because they're so placid most of the time and just easy and slow moving and, you know, just, they're kind of like the perfect handling snake. They're the right size, they're not too big, they're not dangerous, but at the same time, they're not too small either. And they're impressive. If you know someone who doesn't really know a lot about snakes or doesn't have a ton of experience and you hand them a ball python, they're not gonna be underwhelmed. It's still impressive, especially in person. You know, you see all these videos about these gigantic snakes and you think, ah, well, I can handle a Burmese python, no problem. But then when you put a ball python in someone's hands for the first time for real, like a real live snake, they realize that, you know, a four foot snake's pretty big. And then you get the big girls like that one who is five and a half feet long and she is almost 3000 grams, which is what, six pounds? That's a big snake. That's a big, big ball python. But one of the reasons I think that they're such great handling animals is because they will hold on to you, but it never gets scary. Like with boa constrictors, which is why I didn't put them on the list, although they are really great handling and we did cover the Dumerals boa, these guys don't feel scary when they hold on to you. It's not so tight that you feel like, oh no, I can't get my hand out of here. Believe it or not, that is the case. Even with me, I'm a pretty small dude, but still I've been handling snakes for a long, long time. And uh, a boa constrictor, if they have your arm, sometimes it's a little bit of work to get your arm uh, from their coils. And it's not dangerous by any means, it's just kind of inconvenient. And if you're new to reptiles, it, it might be a little bit scary. You don't have to worry about that with ball pythons. These guys will hold on to you and it feels like a nice firmish type of hug, but it feels like a, a comforting hug. And for most people, ball pythons are the perfect size. I mean, a four foot snake is what, what they are on average, although they could be a little bit smaller, or a little bit bigger as you saw. These guys are generally a perfect size for most people because some snakes are too small, which is why you're not gonna see any colubrids on the list because they're a little bit small and flighty and I just don't really know of any colubrid that's perfect for handling or better than anyone on this list. And just to show you the size comparison, this is my other female normal looking uh, ball python. So she's not quite as big. She's actually grown quite a bit. This is Miss Noodle. You've probably seen her in other videos and uh, she's in blue. So she's trying to take some pops at me, but this is very uncommon. Uh, ball pythons in general are very reluctant to bite, which is one of the great things about handling snakes, right? It is if a snake isn't willing to bite you, it's more fun because you're less on edge. With this girl here, normally one of the best snakes that I have, but she keeps cocking her head back like she wants to take a piece of me. And both of them, along with the other ball pythons that I have, the smaller males who stay a little bit smaller, 
are, are a lot of fun and reluctant to bite and, and just overall really good and because they're slow and uh, a little bit more derpy <laughs> and they don't have like fast movements they're a little bit easier to read so I mean Miss Noodle there, she's in blue, which is why I didn't want to handle her for most of this, just because when their eyes are blued over like this, they can be a little bit on edge. And that'd be a bad example, because almost all ball pythons are great temperament, right? Some of them, you know, every animal's an individual. So I, I don't want to get this confused in this video. Some of these animals may take a shot at you or may try to be flighty. They're all individuals, but in general, the ones that I'm picking are the ones that are least likely to bite you, or if they do it, it doesn't hurt you. And of course, the ones that are just really fun and easy to handle and uh, offer the most enjoyment without you having to be super worried about it. So, uh, those are ball pythons. Oh yeah, and by the way, super easy to care for. Humidity is a little bit of a challenge for some people. You don't need a big enclosure, two by four, something like that. Even smaller for males, some would say. A 41 quart tub, something like that. Again, surprise, surprise, I got a care guide. Number two, you thought she was gonna be number one. This is Littlefoot, the leopard gecko. Now you guys have seen this shot a million times before, right? Me talking to a camera with this on my shoulder. Sorry, this. Leopard gecko on my shoulder. And it doesn't matter which one, I got a whole rack behind the camera here of leopard geckos and every single one of them I can just pick up and put on my shirt and they do this and that's it. And the nice thing with leopard geckos is they don't really poop on you that often. So you can do this, unlike our number one, which we're going to get to in a second. Uh, this is an, uh, a poop gun, a, a weapon of poop destruction. This is just going to sit on your shoulder, be super calm, not going to bite you, not going to poop on you, not going to musk on you. Leopard geckos are one of the most perfect animals you could possibly handle. And I think African fat tails could be kind of like a tie with this. The only reason they're not number one is because their size. They're a little bit small. And this isn't an issue for me or for a grown adult who can be a little bit more cautious and a little bit more careful. But eh, part of the enjoyment of reptiles is letting kids handle them sometimes, right? If you've got kids or if you are a kid um, and you wanna handle a reptile, you wanna make sure that you are handling it the right way. And younger kids with leopard geckos they're just kind of small and fragile. And even sometimes if uh, you're being careful but accidents happen, this is, although a hardy reptile and will be very easy to care for, like one of the easiest you could possibly have, they're small and their tails come off and you know, accidents happen. Very unlikely, but just enough that they're number two. Um, so enough of the negative Nancy stuff. Why are they so good? Well, they do this. So you could watch a movie with them or edit a video like I'm about to do now with her on my shoulder. You know, they make great educational animals. The way they move is really entertaining as well. They kind of move like a dinosaur, which is awesome. Everyone likes dinosaurs. If, if you don't, we can't be friends. They are just absolutely fantastic to watch and look at. And there's a million different colors and morphs, just like the ball python. I, I forgot to mention that, but the thing is with handling animals is you're gonna be looking at them the whole time and you want them to be good looking. And I can't really think of any reptiles off the top of my head that aren't super good looking, but leopard geckos come in whole bunch of different patterns and colors so you can always pick the color that suits you best and with her and that's the thing too is if I want to grab her she might try to run away a little bit but she's not gonna be super duper fast I can hold her like this you know if the camera wants to like look how good looking this animal is this is a beautiful beautiful animal um, this is a uh, everyone always asks it's a max snow that's the the morph that she is and also they're fun to watch eat and you can actually feed them with a snake I would never I would never recommend feeding a snake with your hands. I would always use tongs because when snakes try to eat something, most of the time, it's a violent affair, right? I mean, that is a terrible word some would say to use, but think about it. A uh, ball python takes food, constricts it so it dies, and then swallows it whole. With her, she'll take little mealworms out of your hand and it doesn't, you know, it's not scary. It's like feeding the ducks at the park, you know what I mean? It's funny because her sister's name is Ducky, so. In general, with leopard geckos, there's really nothing intimidating about them. They're small size, uh, they've got this beautiful tail, this beautiful coloration, they've got these really cool eyes, they kind of just, the way they look around, um, they are, I you keep using the word derpy, but they are, and slow moving, but they're not like, I don't know, super fast or skittish. And when I go in to pick, the, uh, pick her up, she just kind of like looks around like, her, is this aliens, is it my time? Like she doesn't know what's going on. Uh, she doesn't really run for me at all. So. This is probably my favorite to handle, you know, besides Erwin. I mean, just the easiest to handle it for videos, I guess. My favorite to handle on video because I don't have to worry about it. 
I don't have to worry about it. I just, you put it on your shoulder and, and that's it. You know, you can focus on what you're doing rather than having to focus on, is this animal trying to get away from me? Is it squirming? Does it have sharp nails? Uh, might it take a shot at me? You don't have to worry about that with leopard geckos. Oh yeah, and they use really small enclosures. So unlike, you know, a boa, if you wanted to get a boa, you'd have a big enclosure and it might be, you know, you might have to get in to the very back of the enclosure that might be three feet deep and it might be like an ordeal to get the animal out. With her, I keep her in a, a 20 gallon front opening exoterra enclosure. So I literally open the door and like my arm never goes past my elbow to get in there. Like no matter where she is, it's easy to grab them. So if you want to handle something and you want it to be as simple as like reaching into a cage and grabbing it and it's super small and it, you know, it's not like a workout to handle like a boa or a really big ball python might be. I can't think of anything better than a leopard gecko. These guys are, you know, maybe one of the best, but there is in my opinion, one animal that is better for handling or more fun, more enjoyable to handle than a leopard gecko. And that is number one, a bearded dragon. Now, okay. I'm always a negative Nancy. People think that I don't like them. It's not true. I love bearded dragons. My first reptile ever was a bearded dragon. It's the only thing on this list I currently don't have, which we're going to get into in a second. Why? Um, but these are, in my opinion, the best for handling. Where that? So I'm talking about how leopard geckos don't go anywhere and she's like on the back of my collar. And here's why I think these guys might be better for handling than leopard geckos. They're bigger. So although they're a little bit quicker, they're not really going to try to run away from you if they're well socialized, but I don't know. It just, they're a little bit more substantial and, and they don't feel like tiny and they don't feel like frail, you know, with a bearded dragon, I feel like I could, you know, cross my arms and have it on my arms and tr try to like weasel into my, my, my nice execution. You're doing terrific between my arm and my body and it wouldn't get hurt with a leopard gecko. I'd be afraid of like it getting crushed, you know, just from the weight of, you know, my arm or something like that with a bearded dragon. They're a little bit more tankish a little bit uh for more formidable you know they're a little bit easier um to not care wherever they go on your body and have to worry about it with a leopard gecko i reach behind me and i'm very gentle when i grab her with a bearded dragon i mean i'm not saying crush your bearded dragon or punch it or anything like that like this isn't a ufc event here oh, oh whoa we've never Jessica! seen that. we're talking about an animal but they're just, I don't know. What I'm trying to say here is they're not as fragile, okay? And they're just as sociable. They're just as nice. They're just as fun to handle. And because they have like these cool little spikes on them, they have a cool texture. And when you're handling an animal, I mean, the texture of it is something that you're going to be feeling when you, you know, th these guys are bumpy, leopard geckos. But bearded dragons, they, I don't know, have a like sandpaper like finish to the, <laughs> the top of their backs and then the side of them, they have like these cool spikes. And then when you pet underneath, the chin of a bearded dragon. Everyone thinks I'm so weird when I say this. It feels like a puppy's ear. Like the underneath of their chin is so soft. I don't know. I need to get another bearded dragon. But here's why I don't have one. I had two. Uh, they both died of old age. So they lived great lives, you know, uh, over a decade old, both of them. Um, but they require a lot of work. So they require a little bit more maintenance in that they need to eat almost every day. Uh, they have a very varied diet. Where with a leopard gecko, you feed it, you know, mealworms, crickets, dubia roaches, and, and that's it with a little bit of supplementation. With bearded dragons, they need fresh vegetables, a little bit of fruit, some protein. And it, yeah, it's just a little bit more work. Um, also, they're going to need a bigger space, of course, right? A four by two would be fine for a bearded dragon with a little bit of height. The UVB needs to be a 10.0 and you need to really stay on top of it. Where with a leopard gecko, they could go their whole life without UVB and be absolutely perfectly healthy. A bearded dragon won't. So for kids, it might be a little bit easier uh, to handle, but it's not going to be uh, easier to take care of because a UVB bulb, I don't know where, how much it is where you live, but where I live, you know, they can be 30 or 40 bucks and they need to be changed about every six months or so, or a year, depending on the brand. So a little bit more expensive um, in general to, to keep, but that's why this didn't inhibit them for being number one. This is a handling video. I just kind of want to give you a, an idea and that's the only one I don't have a care guide for. Leopard gecko care guide here, by the way, I forgot to point that out. But bearded dragons of the bunch seem the most alert. They don't seem very derpy at all. And I know there'll be a few in the comment section. Tell my bearded dragon that. He's a little bit of a, a, a derpy, derpy Dave. He's derpy. I get it. Some are, there's individuals, but I've never met a bearded dragon that didn't like to be held or wouldn't tolerate being held anyway. I don't know. Bearded dragons are my favorite. I love them. I know I take shots at them all the time for their care requirements, but when it comes down to pure handling bliss, nothing beats a bearded dragon. And there you go. There's your top five 
best handling. What do you think? Did I miss something? Is there something I should have added on the list or something that didn't belong? What do you think? A big special thank you as always to our Patreon supporters. It's because of you guys that I can afford to hand feed little foot and her friends, little mealworms and stuff like that. So thank you very much. For as little as a dollar a month, you can get extra content, watch these videos several days early, uh, know about special things in my collection that most of you don't know about, the secret reptiles, stuff like that. That's all on Patreon. Um, that's all I have to plug, right? Hit subscribe. See you on Thursday.